Hello, and welcome to the State of Human Design on June 22nd, 2022. Our first professional version of this. Yeah, I feel quite professional with my, with my legal pad <laughs> and with my actual notes this time. <laughs> it's a huge upgrade. We got and, a uh, producer and a ring light. We're sitting next to each other. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's going on. We're supposed to be sitting... Wait, it's all wrong. He's, he's movement. I'm... Uh, you know, I'm base two. Oh, yeah. The base we have five. To we actually yeah. have to sit like this the whole time. Okay. This, is the, yeah. this is the true. Uh, this is way less contrived. <laughs> oh my so, god, this is so like <laughs> Mike. I don't know what to talk to you about. <laughs> I'm gonna proceed with my hand on your leg uncomfortably. Okay, uh, question. Question from a viewer. So I've been so excited. But before we get oh. to this, I just have to share. I just have to share. Mike told me last week. Now, he has defined head and ajna, and for people who know human design and they know the head and the ajna, they'll know, you know, if a, a, a defined head and ajna person, they're kind of impenetrable when you're trying to get them to think about something, you know, they're, they're thinking about their own things. But an undefined head and ajna, uh -huh. <laughs> anything you say, it's like, don't think of a pink elephant. They're like, why would I think of it? And then they're thinking about pink elephants. Mm. And so Mike tells me last week, there's a viewer who has a question for you. <laughs> that he wants that he wants to know, and he's asked me to ask you, and um, and he doesn't tell me what the question is, and, I, and it's like so every day it's like how long can I go without wondering what the question is? I see. You know, that's a very large pool of possible questions. It's more like two weeks, also. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been two weeks. I mentioned a couple times, and I'm like, so this question, you're like, yep, I got, I got a question. <laughs> I, I remember I have what it. it is. I'm gonna read it again. We'll <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> So we'll just do a little overview, though. So we're going to have a question from a viewer. We're going to talk a little bit about Teal Swan. We're going to um, touch on some things with the conference, um, questions we get, uh, a new Ra Uruhu Groiper account, whatever that is. Okay. And we're going to find out uh, what that is all about. We're going to talk about Chetan Parkin and his recent... Um, uncovering. His recent uncovering, yeah. <laughs> the uncovering of one of his books in Ukraine. Uh, we'll talk about a little segment that's going to be coming up in the conference and have some news about the HDHD 2022 conference and people who will be joining us. Um, and yeah, maybe we'll get a find out some Twitter if we have time. This is a lot of material. Yeah, well, um, it's okay because each one of these is like, you know, what are we really going to say about the Rahu Ruhu Groiper account? Really? Uh, I mean, what is there it, to it, say? It exists. <laughs> yeah. It's something that exists. There's one of those now. Yeah, yeah that's, that's now. <laughs> and I, I should touch on the Steve Rhodes. I mean, here's what's funny is that this is our segment. So State of Human Design is all about what's going on in the world of human design. I want to talk about Steve Rhodes, but it's not even really going on in the world of human design. It's just something that I'm into. So oh. I'm like, it's like when somebody tries to make a trend or tries to make a meme, mm. and you can tell that that's me with the Steve Rhodes stuff. That's right contagious, now. though. The, like, because of you, those discussions are popping up. The I Rhodes hope they stuff, are. The tone, I, and the tone stuff in general. I haven't seen them yet. See, this is why mm. I need Mike, because I have not seen that yet. Mm. I've been looking on Facebook, they're not there yet. Mm. There may be on Reddit. There may be on. See, this is interesting. Where does it? Where is the mutation happening? Oh, yeah. How long does yeah, it take to bubble up? And yeah. what are the layers? What are the striations? What are the? What's the hierarchy? What are the? Very, I see. I see yeah. the most Jonah heads on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's well. That's where my 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 people are. Uh, it makes sense. I'm on Discord, so it makes sense. But I'm not on the groups they're in. I'm on the stock trading groups. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm on Discord for the stocks. <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry guys. Um, but okay. So let's just, okay, so the question from a viewer. So is this a, a Discord question? Discord fielded? Mm -hmm. Yeah, then? they contacted okay. me via Discord. Great. Um, oh, my screen is kind of messed up. Maybe I should text it to you and then you can. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. And I can. Um, Get out uh, my hand computer as well, and <laughs> all right. Just got a message from Peter Burv. Hey Jonah, I think I may just end up being spontaneous that week of the conference about coming down. So that's great. So you know he has been somebody that I have not announced yet, but now I can announce that he may or may not come, which is good enough for me. I've told people about the conference because you know someone said. Um, Oh, it's not fair for the defined solar plexus people that 
the tickets went became available not even tickets but the slots became available mm, and then the true. RSVP filled up and now it's full and you have to do the wait list and all the stuff and they're like we didn't have time to get the clarity right. and um, you know I'm all about people having all the time in the world like I don't know if Peter is I mean I, see, here's the other funny thing is I don't even ask myself is this person I, I, I'm not the police of you living your design it doesn't mm. you know it doesn't mm. really affect me like part of the nice thing about human design is the enlightened selfishness of like as an undefined head in Ajna to legitimately not really care about or yeah. be curious about other people's designs not sometimes. my problem <laughs> I'm only curious about your design when I'm curious about your design yeah. and if I'm not curious about your design I'm just treating you with the same respect that I bring to anyone now I do like to know type I do like to know certain things sometimes so that I can mm. it makes more sense to me I go oh okay 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 this person's a manifester mm. I, I gotta be careful not to but usually I just naturally do that anyway right. if someone's acting like a manifester rather they really are you know they could really be a manifester they could be a not self generator right acting like a man. It's not as convincing though when they are. When <laughs> but either not. way, I'm going to treat yeah. them the same way and give them yeah. a wide berth and, you know, and not, uh, not, and so on. So there, I can I, read it off your Oh, wonderful. You wonderful. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. I'll read it to you. Okay. Um, I don't remember what this says. Let's find out. Um, let's see. Oh. Okay, I'm just going to read it verbatim because I don't even remember what the point of this was. <laughs> um, uh, I was thinking that someone like Jonah was embedded across his lifetime in a lot of exclusivist social circles. <laughs> this is some of this fifth line projection, maybe. People have all kinds of assumptions about you and your life, right? Oh, don't assume that I wasn't <laughs> part of these exclusivist circles. <laughs> yeah. Don't make that assumption about me. <laughs> Many of them associated with the 60s, 70s counterculture and its various offshoots in mass culture today. Like, whatever rock star whose name I can't remember, but whose name was casually dropped in a stream. I wonder who you could use. Mike Shreve. Oh. Probably. Because, I, well, Seattle just has such old heads like that. Right, like, right, you right. and your family. It's a real music town. But, yeah. yeah. I remember him talking about meeting with all sorts of important figures like Jeff Bezos and saying, well, actually, they're not that smart or they're not that satisfied with their lives or even something to the effect of, I can't believe they believe in something as dumb as manifestation. I don't see this dismissal of their beliefs as a dismissal of the general mental influence living in a social environment like this leaves on you. Being surrounded by the rich and famous and artistic and beautiful and transformative and transgressive and not by day-to-day middle-class slash working-class rabble who go to church every Sunday and piss their pants every time the Sex Pistols come on the TV has to have some effect on you. <laughs> this is really interesting. Oh, well, it definitely has an effect on you. Get the yeah. hell out of there. Yeah. Leave. Go. Yeah. Just go. P- take yeah. your bags and just go to the bus stop and, and you'll be so ha- much happier. Okay. Especially since today the value of being part of the elite comes from the hustle. Or if not the hustle, then using your free time productively to improve yourself. Yeah. Well, no. well, that's a load. Yeah. And I'm totally with them. This person and their critique, right. very like Hillmanian critique of, you know, improvement. And right. Right. But I'm oh, sorry. But go on. Go on. Yeah. Um, though, obviously, human design is actively advising people to go against this grain. Um, but still, the new elite is no longer defined by pure birthright. The new elite is defined by education, which is something fewer and fewer middle and working class people are getting access to, not because they don't want to, but because costs are prohibited. Absolutely false. Homeless people, people experiencing homelessness, have laptops and are getting more information. Like, that literally, like the least great. information that you have access to now. Like, I worked with Code Fellows, my mentor founded Code Fellows, helping vets helping people experiencing homelessness drug addiction all sorts of stuff learn computer programming like that is literally one of the most false like everything else i'm totally in agreement yeah, I don't with see fewer except fewer, fewer, this yeah. like massive falsehood about the inability to have access to information see a lot of it this person I, is I'm just european gonna, by the well, way well i just want to and i just want to okay that is good to know and i'm just going to pause for just one second just to say just to say that there's a real grieving process that happens when you go through human design which is the coming to peace i think like when you hear how ra talks about 2027 he talks about post 2027 mm. he talks about the changes happening the rise of autism the fertility the on and on and on the infertility on and on and on i mean going into a new dark ages mm. and to come to peace with the state of the world while simultaneously ra only gave to one charity mm. young women in developing nations mm-hmm. Education, right? Educating young yeah. women, yeah. So, and I'm like, so I'm a hundred percent on board while also acknowledging that you have to grieve and come to peace with the fact that 
20 million people in the world are mutative. And mm -hmm. the rest, if they were gathered together into various mobs, would kill the people like you and me and the mutants. Mm. Okay, and I'm sorry, but this is doesn't this cuts across every nation, every country, oh, yeah. every type of division you can have, everything. In a Lord of the Flies situation, the twenty million are extremely outnumbered by the other eight million. Right. Or the other seven mm. billion nine hundred and eighty million. Mm. Right. So anyway, well, let's continue. Can you um... Yes, absolutely. My password is <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, the rabble. Um. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we're we're all rabble. I mean, it, the other thing is, well, I talked about this in the, my video the other day. Okay, yeah, so I, I don't want to pause. I don't, I don't they, want to they pause use again. the word rabble. But I just want to say in the, that there's a real belief in the masses not realizing that the people that are, like, advocating, like, I'm sorry, but the real elite, this person's talking about the real elite, uh -huh. and you can say all you want about white privilege, about male privilege. These are all absolutely real, 100%. I, I'm the the beneficiary of various subject positions to which I belong, just like Slavoj Žižek is the beneficiary to his and so on. But I'm very Žižekian, I'm very, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, ultimately the real elite mm -hmm. is the people who found human design mm -hmm. and is the people who've risen to the inner circles of whatever field they've within happened. Within the sea of confusion. Within the sea of confusion, they've all found, like, I was reading about The Kitchen the other day, which was, you know, where Talking Heads came out of, and Arthur Russell, but also where all these amazing artists, and Steve Reich and Philip Glass, and then the Vasulkas who moved to Santa Fe, and then with, with Frank and Mariana started Currents, and they're mm. all friends, and they all know each other, and they're all part of the same little group, and Patti mm. Smith comes through, and they all, you know... All of these little mutated, of course, no and, and, yeah. and so and so, it's easy from the outside to be like, "Oh, you're around the beautiful." Well, first of all, what's beautiful is being yourself. I mean, oh, yeah. to, to look at Patty Smith; she's extremely beautiful, incredible, and had an amazing life, and lived so much as herself, and done everything. As, I mean, she's like mm. a hero, mm. you know. And yet, does she conform to the normal normative standards of beauty? Anything? No, not at all. So, I mean, anyway, it's a long conversation, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, a lot of people who are really like resentful of the way things are and want to like throw everything away and start over with something new mm -hmm. actually just have individual circuitry and mm -hmm. it's called just being fed up with the system and I'm glad that you're fed up with it so you can like create new systems mm -hmm. but as a representative of the collective with the collective yeah, yeah. circuitry here I'm just going to say you know <laughs> we're Hard to get a foothold, yeah. Yeah, exactly. what, to do, what to do. I've exactly. been seeing what to do. What to do, what to do. It's just, yeah, yeah it's later, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I actually don't know when this question ends, so I'll just keep reading. Let's do it. Let's uh, do it. <laughs> uh, like, elite privileges are still being preserved, but this time being lower class is moralized. I do... Oh, interesting. I do feel like calling people mutative or not is rooted in a very specific historical contingency. My own experience showed me that you can get across to someone with their design, whether they care about HD or not. Of course, people aren't going to be receptive to it by and large, but the respect you show them on the basis of their design, whether they know about it or not, has an impact beyond anything else. Oh, my That's God. Really cool. Okay, no, this is not only a good point. This is the absolute foundation and core of all of human design mm -hmm. is the enlightened selfishness where you don't care about anybody else, but they all are, you're like the most pleasant person to them. Or oh, even yeah. if you're unpleasant, I mean, Rob was unpleasant at times too. Even if still, regardless, you don't get the resistance from them because you mm -hmm. are not directly going against their design and you're also navigating away from the people who are going directly against yours. Mm -hmm. You're basically yeah. self-selecting out of any inhibiting group. Weirdly though, you're actually going deeper and deeper into a more and more specific limitation. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you're becoming more and more limited, not less. Mm -hmm. That's what you surrender to is the limitation totally. because the struggle against it is what's the homogenizing force that leads you to be around all these people who don't even like you. Yeah. They just like some false version of you that you've been presenting your whole life. Right. So it's like you get, it, it's so, it's such a weird paradox because you get more freedom because you get more freedom because there's less resistance in what you're doing, but the range of what you're doing is so much more special. It's so much more you limited. Abandon, you yeah. abandon all the virtual freedoms, all the like possibilities of people you could be or things you could do. Because it turns out to be irrelevant. And then in that much narrower uh, realm of being that you find yourself in, you have like unlimited capacity to act within <laughs> what that is. Within so a really you, narrow yeah, band, yeah. yeah. It's so strange. It's like just finding your rails or whatever. I mean, this person is obviously very, very, you know, given a lot of thought to it. And I, I do want to... Yeah, this person's smart we, as well. We can go back to the mutative or not question in a moment, but let's yeah. just continue, finish it up, and then we'll go back to mutative or not. I think that's basically the end of it. Let's see. There's one or two more sentences. Yeah, let's see, let's see what we get. 
ever since I started experimenting, for instance, I find generators respect my need for rest. This is a projector talking. And understand that I'm a little different with regards to energy. I also notice people live their designs, whether they know it or not. But so oftentimes, unfortunately, the real... Uh, there's an error here. The real something uh, gets swept up under the fuzz of the not self. The real whatever. The real signature. So they're kind of like living out both or something. Yeah, they're just kind of living out everything in the kitchen sink lives. Yeah. Where they're just living out the not self and the true self. Okay. Well, I want to, this is a good little segue into Steve Rhodes. I am going to wrap up this question and keep going, but I think this is a question that should be returned to. And so if whoever has questions for me can always email me, jdmc at gmail.com. And if you want to continue this conversation and kind of return to this topic. But I want to just have two quick points. One is Steve Rhodes' perspective um, on human design. And then the other is the mutative or not question. Mm. So for Steve Rhodes' perspective on human design, he doesn't really say there's the true self and the not self. He doesn't really say, he doesn't have types. Oh, yeah. There's no living your design or not. There's no transference with color. It's just mm. first and second preference. Right. You're like, know, oh, you yeah. also prefer this. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, um, we're, we're desire. We also happen to prefer innocence. I mean, mm. <laughs> so that's, those are our two preferences. Some innocence people also prefer desire. Mm. I don't see it that way at all. I'm a desire person and he's an innocence person. And it's almost like the desire people are saying there's a difference and innocence mm -hmm. people are saying they're not. Mm -hmm. And it's a very classic thing because they're saying nothing really matters and I'm saying it does matter. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, well, it doesn't matter that you say it matters. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, well, it doesn't matter that you say it doesn't matter because it still matters despite the fact you say it doesn't. Right, right. And it's just an endless debate between desire and innocence. Well, even Ross said that the transference is part of the mechanism, right? That color is meant to transfer and you never... It's meant to transfer so you can be a brainwashed slave to the program and never wake up. Oh. The old, I mean, it's... Well, I, mean, no, I, I, think, you know, I, I mean, I remember reading Ross saying something that was like um, the... Like, you need the transference of color to be in the correct color. So it's just about collapsing into false transference and coming back to it continually. And that you never really resolve it. You know what I mean? Well, and that's how it's designed to okay. function. It's to get, you, to get you into the place of transference so you can get back from it because that's how you get to the correct transference or something like that. I mean, you definitely... He did say it always transfers. And, it, of course, color is all rooted in the four. But which I don't think is, that's dysfunction. I don't think that's program dysfunction. Yeah, you're saying it's all by design. Yeah. You're saying that color transference is by design. So they do have a point. And their point is this is the way it was designed. And Ra's point is the more heretical point of this is how it's designed, but we're, we're going to break our covenant with the gods. Mm. And it's the more kind of punk, like, screw the way it's designed. Mm. We're going to fight oh, I against see, I this. See. And so that's why I do think that what this... See, here's the funny thing. A lot of the people who come to me with questions similar to the question that I got, and I'll get to the mutative or not in a moment, mm. think that they're really here to save the world. Mm. And they're not. They're here to find people like you and me and Jenny. She's to enjoy their lives. Right? They're and they're, well, they're, they're, they're here to find their mutative family. Mm. And there's only 20 million of us in the world. And you can say it's an elite, but that's 20 million people. You don't really feel that special in a group of 20 million. I mean, mm. I mean but I guess... You, it's also like all of us are elite because we're the only intelligence in the entire cosmos. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but, but I do want to get to mutative or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is an interesting one because there's so many different ways we can talk about mutation. On the one hand, like I'm not mutative. So I, I think in a way I do casually refer to mutative or not fractal lines. That's different than the billions and billions of people with individual circuitry out mm -hmm. there. And that's billions and billions of people who, for the first time in history, are able to actually express that individual circuitry en masse, mm. not to mention all the collective people who are able to observe it and, and soak it up, mm. and all the tribal people and so on who are able to have their groups and things that they can connect with mm. and identities and so on. But I guess what I'm trying to say is this is an unparalleled, incredible time where before 1781, and this is where I, I, I'm going to pause after this and, and you know, keep going on with, mm. with the questions, but I really want to actually dig deep into 1781. So at the Human Design Conference that's coming up, we're doing a 1781 panel. Mm. Because before 1781, there was no right variable. Mm. Before 1781, there was no emotional intelligence. There was no feeling, uh, feeling awareness. You know, there was no, come on. I mean, like, this mm. is a big deal. Like, we need to, like, really understand what this meant. Mm. There were... Everyone was expected to be left variable in every way, shape, and form. And part of that was that you waited around for the Messiah. You waited for the avatars. You mm -hmm. waited for the geniuses. You waited for one of the 4% of the 4% right, fractal right. line to worship. Mm -hmm. So it used to be that the masses worshipped us, the people that are part yeah, of yeah. the 4% of 4%. And 
they would either worship us or they would kill us. And see, this is why I'm also like, there's there's a deep-seated fear. Anyone who's on a mutated fractal line has had God knows how many, like, yeah. we're the ones getting killed by they them. Put the little, okay. They put the little tape over their laptop camera, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's doing something mutative, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I guess what I'm trying to say is, before 1781, the 4% of the 4% essentially were the makers of history, mm. more or less, and... The, the killer monkey homo sapiens mm. that was rising to power, the colonialist, you know, seven-centered, predominantly Eurocentric, white patriarchal system, and, the, and you know, even just the, the you know, limitation, uh, like Jung talks about, to the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, and all mm. of these. You can look at it however you want. You can look at it through Rhea Eisler, Chalice, and the Blade, however you want. Mm. The seven-centered being was here for a very specific purpose, which was to become the apex predator at the top of the killing Right. chain then we mutate it mm -hmm. we are not them yeah. we are not them we are mutating to like be more like the neanderthals mm -hmm. that they killed right you know mm -hmm. and we're in this new world in these new forms with these new consciousnesses and sensitivities and cognitions and all of this stuff and it's incredible um, and what it's allowed us to do is it used to always be that the masses waited around for the leader and now everyone gets to be their own leader. So in mm -hmm. some sense, when Ra does say everyone can benefit from knowing their type and knowing their strategy and authority, that's true. But I'm also saying that everyone is now already, look at TikTok, everyone is benefiting from the freedom of, and the available access to technology, which allows the self-selection out of limiting circumstances and economically limiting and otherwise at a major scale we've never before seen ever in history. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be that you were just born into a caste right, or a right. class and you were there. And in many parts of the world, it still is that way. Mm -hmm. But in the developing Western world, if you can get into the Western world, mm -hmm. then you have a chance. Now, mm -hmm. that's part of it. If you're in Bangladesh, how do you get here? Mm -hmm. You know, you can't. Um, and that's another problem. But that problem is feudalism. That's, mm -hmm. not, a, that's not a modern problem. That's mm -hmm. a problem. That's a seven-centered problem. Mm -hmm. That's a leftover of seven-centered slave labor and feudalism mm -hmm. that has never gone away. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to say, though, is once you have access to the freedom of information and technology and so on, you don't have to be part of the 4% of 4% who are the kind of front row seats at the Big Bang. You can be anyone, anywhere, mm. and still gain the joy of being a creator. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's interesting. People um, have done, like, there's that Century of the Self documentary series, mm -hmm. and it's all about, you know, is it narcissism and the obsession with the self oh, and yeah, so yeah. on. No, it's not narcissism. It's just that throughout all of history, 4% of the 4% have always lived this way. Mm -hmm. And now everyone else gets to kind of right. also be a creator, also be a content mm -hmm. creator, also be give expression to all these things that were historically prevented. The potential is now there for everybody. Yeah, and yeah. as Steve Rhodes puts it, um, now we have people who actually are put in a good mood by feeling and they want to feel good. And mm -hmm. he has a system of success, respect, feeling. Well, before 1781, it was only success and respect. Mm -hmm. That's all anyone cared, mm -hmm. cared about, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, but, yeah. and so I guess the interesting thing, yeah, and, th and then there was just for the raw quote, he just said, it used to be that we waited for the avatars. Now each of us gets to be our own incarnation of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. However, it's only going to be the 20 million who will break the covenant with the Godheads. Mm -hmm. The other 7 um, billion 980 million people mm -hmm. are going to, uh, you know, make their, they're, they're all trying to get their Godhead to win. Right, right. They're each trying to make their Godhead go to the top of the stack, yeah, and they're yeah. all like fighting for their particular faction, and so they're going to be putting out YouTube content that's all like, if only we get, you know, right. peace is the way to get along. Someone else is going to be like, no, being strong and tough is the way to get along, and yeah, someone yeah. else is like, no, actually being smart is the way to get along. Yeah, yeah. You know? Everyone mm -hmm. has their little avenue, and there's 16 of them. The thing they're advocating for. The thing for, that they're yeah. advocating yeah. for, and they're not going to break their, they're not going to break their um, Godhead, you know, their contract with the gods. Right. They are going to continue to keep that contract, and they're going to be a homogenizing force in others, and they're going to be part of the not-self program that mm -hmm. keeps people asleep, that keeps people locked in. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, because... That's, we, not everybody can be part of that. I mean, you know, the, there's mi so many billions of crystals of consciousness out there. Mm. And it's just a matter of almost the kind of, you have to find your way back to your people, whatever you're in. It doesn't have to be human design. There's mutative people in avant-garde dance. There's mutative people in, you know, in anything. So. Yeah. Um, so, so yesterday we were explaining um, this to, to someone like fractal lines a little bit and I had this visual pop into my head from Finding Nemo and it was like the sea turtle that finds the big current 
that like leads it. Oh know, yeah, that to, is. And yeah. that's kind of how I thought about human design. It's like you know you can be swimming with your school of fish and maybe like you're feeling like it's not your thing, and but you can end up finding that super stream that like aligns you with like where you're really meant to be. Mm, yeah. Um, so I I wanted to share that because I thought it was relevant. Find in your lane. <laughs> People love to say stay in your lane. Exactly. I mean, that's yeah. that's been around for like five years. No, no that's no choice. Right yeah. yeah. That's been that's really a popular thing to, to say. Yeah. Very popular. Thing to say. Um, well, that, yeah, that raises a million more questions, but we should go to the. Uh, well, yeah, let's just let's continue on. So, okay, next interesting one was dive in. One of our favorite human design analysts, commentators, uh, investigators, experimenters, everything. Um, did a sleb analysis of teal swan. Oh, good. Just in time. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't read it because I've just been so busy with other things. Jenny, did you have a chance to see it much, or did you Did you yeah, see it? Yeah, I actually just I brought it up um, right here. And, yeah, it's just really interesting when you get such a thorough... Oh, I don't have my god. Hey, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's so, so interesting when you get such, such a thorough analysis on... Facebook and so Teal Swan's a four six reflector, and she was born on twelve four, um, so just recently, June birthday. Oh, do they have um, Happy birthday Teal Swan? Do you know if that's an exact time? Because this came up a few years ago, and somebody had like another, another birth time for her. Um, that was not brought up. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure, but there was a lot of. Um, discussion within the comment threads because Teal Swan's kind of a controversial figure um, and there are people who claim that she's a cult leader and so it was just a, some interesting conversation within there but um, really that nice uh, analysis that went all the way to color so she w is the opportunist teacher on the mind side and the role model guru hmm. on the body Oh, so she's a, she's innocence. I, I missed that. Is she a, she's a she's a transitional profile and. Oh, she's hope. Oh, she's hope. Okay. Color two. She's hope. Yeah, she's color two. Um, actually, no, color one mind. Sorry, I mixed that up. She's fear, and then she is closed um, appetite with or no, closed taste with color two. And so, if you look at it through Steve Rhodes, she's uh, low resilience on both sides. Which, Mike and I had a really interesting conversation about, and he pointed out that if you think of it with continuity to the line, the first line's an authoritarian. Um, and basically, what Steve Rhodes says about low resilience is they need to silence other people because they don't like the conflict from other people disagreeing with them or having, this is on the personality side, uh, so they don't want anyone to, you know, so it's interesting. She must be bothered um, by the um, documentary then. Do you know, uh, what are her tones? For the... Um, the tones, let me see if they're in this. Oh, wait, it's right here. So if this is the right one, this is the reflector 4-6 chart. It would be s 6. Yeah, and I'm seeing uh, 6 So feeling five. good. So according to Steve Rhodes' analysis, all she wants is to feel good. And so that's actually funny. Then I guess she probably wouldn't be bothered at all by the documentary. You know, that's funny because someone like Silvio Berlusconi, I was reading this in Steve Rhodes' book earlier, he's double respect. And he was found guilty of all these terrible things in the Italian courts. Mm. And they, uh, it was so shameful to him that he let a documentary crew come in in the hopes that they would kind of save his mm. reputation. They made it worse. Oh, and he no. just got more and more, oh, no. just worse and worse, just down the rabbit hole. So... Um, Let's just read a little bit what Dive In says about it. The reflector aura is resistant in sampling. It holds up a mirror in a simplified sense to its environment. That's a good way to think of it. The reflector aura is like a barometer, a measure of their environment, and a reflector of the neutrino programming field. I yeah, love that way true. of describing yeah. it. When I came so into they're all cult leaders. Well, <laughs> when I came into human design, nobody was describing reflectors as transmitters of the neutrino mm -hmm. field. But when I heard Ra describe them, that sounded exactly like, I mean, he didn't say it in those words, but it sounded like what he was saying. And so I would always just, I mean, I, I wouldn't always, but at a certain point, I kind of unlocked that understanding of the reflector. And it was actually when my mom was staying with me 
and I had left and it was kind of a melancholy transit or something and as I got back to the house and she's doing stuff around the house I could feel reflectors have the biggest aura of anyone mm-hmm. their aura can like fill a up a whole yeah. house and they kind of like do things to kind of fill up the house in a way so it's mm-hmm. just an interesting um, but um, Jen was telling me some really interesting studies um, uh, from someone she knows that works at an institute uh, I couldn't tell you those details, but she said the aura of a reflector is about a few football fields. What? I could believe that because well, and this also this is an interesting thing. So I do notice aura in that way. Mm-hmm. Steve Rhodes claims that even if you notice aura at an unconscious level, it doesn't cause activation in your chart until you've engaged with that person in some oh, connected way. That's interesting. Like yeah. we're connected mm-hmm. or you know, but just being in the aura unless you're kind of like looking at them and like mm-hmm. locking in with them or mm-hmm. even he really does say using I guess what with the personality versus the design, it's going to be interesting because uh, he doesn't go into that level of detail, but in all of his other areas, he kind of tends to analyze it of, if it's a personality connection, you have to use your mind. Mm-hmm. If you have to speak it. You have to talk about it. You have to think about it. You have to... Mm-hmm. It's a really interesting mm-hmm. uh, interesting system there. Yeah, yeah. So what Divin says about reflectors, um, oh, some nice. people only want teachers who teach morality, but her teachings reflect from a place of duality, not morality. And that's interesting. I um, yeah, and she is supposed to be a teacher, being color one. She really seems way more in her profit transference. Maybe I mean, I mean, she seems way more like a prophet in the way she presents. She doesn't oh, because she presents like here's prophet, the whole thing: yeah. when you're when you're teaching nuts and bolts, mm. that's color one. And I was telling Alok this because he's color four. Mm. He should not be teaching nuts and bolts. Mm-hmm. Mm. at all mm. and I'm so glad he doesn't teach color mm. or much or tone or those kinds mm. of things because he is not at all here to do that he's here to mm. say if you don't do this and this and this that's what's going to happen mm. cool. that's what need that's people good. do like right yeah. and so Teal Swan going out there saying if you don't do this and this and this then your life's going to be that that's her completely in her prophecy mm. transference yeah, she yeah. needs to be teaching like chemistry level science to really mm-hmm. be in her teacher thing or like the science of yeah, yeah. W- whatever it is she's teaching and instead it's so much of the need profit high level gist of it now this is why Alok is so amazing I would say Alok and Teal they're kind of opposites or like Alok is not really in his transference much because when you read his um, the lecture transcriptions in his book mm-hmm. They're all like from a prophecy perspective. Mm-hmm. They're not the neat nitty gritty details. Mm-hmm. They're the wide swaths and the overarching mm-hmm. view from above. The mountains. And they're very much like you can imagine him with a prophet cap. Like we were talking about the three and the four. We've been talking a lot about this recently in, in like forms of leadership, like third tone and third color is the leader, third tone is action, mm-hmm. you know, and so on. And then um, the kind of the action oriented leader of the third tone versus the introspective of the fourth tone. And then you have color three, which is leader, but color four is master. Mm. These are both forms mm. of mastery. Teal Swan presents herself as a master. The teacher is supposed to be extremely humble. Mm. The teacher is supposed to be the geeky professor, you mm. know. So, I, you know, I'm just going to say, like, it's obvious to me that Teal Swan is so deeply locked into the transference of her not self mm. as to, and this happened, I, I've known about her for a while. I mean, she fabricated an incredible amount of conspiratorial satanic uh, mm. stuff and so on and then later it kind of changed to be oh maybe the therapist had abused her and had put this now mm. it is very tragic now with this new lens of Steve Rhodes seeing that Teal Swan is the most traumatized you can be mm-hmm. according mm-hmm. to Steve Rhodes yeah, yeah. because according to Steve Rhodes about a third of the people out there are untouchable maybe not a third a sixth of them mm. statistically are untouchable mm. they're not traumatized on either side mm. you know a third of people are very hard to be traumatized another third are kind of realistic mm. but then but then the last third, you know, right, the final, like, the, you know, sh- she's in the double pessimist mm. uh, category, which is the most in need of therapy, that takes the longest to mm. overcome trauma and hurt. These are splenic binary tones? Splenic binary, yeah. Mm. No, um, not, the, not the tones, it's the color level. So, oh, so just for people who are a little bit lost here, Steve Rhodes has a really nice thing where he kind of says, tone is your happiness color is your trauma oh, you can't get to I your see, happiness when your color is transferred from mm-hmm, the trauma mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. and I mean he doesn't say transferred because he doesn't believe in that but your color right. is damaged in mm-hmm. some way you are injured and so the happiness can't get through until uh, you heal it interesting. and so interestingly it is easier for some people to be happy than others in mm-hmm. some sense now they're going to run into other problems because of that mm-hmm. right if you're a really high resilience person if you're guilt or if you're innocence for mm-hmm. instance 
on the personality side. And say you're also either, um, you know, high or low sound or indirect or direct, you know, you're direct or indirect, direct mm -hmm. light. On the design side, those are the high resilience people and they're not going to be um, easily affected by things. They're not going to, you know, they're going to just be like, oh, that was messed up. What's for dinner? You know, mm -hmm. kind of move yeah. on with life. And they're not going to benefit from therapies and so on, according to Steve Rhodes. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting. But they crave much more excitement and randomness. And you look at all these stunt drivers and F1 drivers, and they're mm -hmm. all fifth and sixth color mm -hmm. on the design side mm -hmm. because they crave that. They can't stand to have the familiarity, the normalcy, the limited access. Mm -hmm. See, if you have low resiliency, you need to limit the access other people have to you. Mm -hmm. and this is what Steve Rhodes is saying, and I, I agree. It's you need to kind of have a life where you embrace familiarity. Mm -hmm. You really test people and take a long time to get to know them and see if they're going to hurt you or not. Because mm -hmm. if they hurt you, it takes you so much longer to recover. Mm -hmm. And a stranger who's not invested in you one way or the other can hurt you, and it can take you months to recover. And you try to or you hurt them or whatever. Not try, but you know, in some relationship or something, you know, and they they say a, a name to you and you call them a name. They just go about their day. Mm -hmm. And you're holding on to that, and mm -hmm. you're you're injured from that, and it's it's affecting your happiness. So it's really I do think Steve Rhodes is a nice layer of human design in that he's kind of even like the question I got earlier about like the masses and mutative or not, and isn't mm -hmm. human design for everyone? Bantu is for everyone mm -hmm. because everyone can benefit from healing, knowing mm -hmm. their resiliency, mm -hmm. and knowing what makes them happy, mm -hmm. right? But you can be not self and happy as a clam, mm -hmm. and. And you can be not self and just need to heal and learn about the healing and realize mm, that see. if you're low resiliency, you're injuring yourself by putting yourself out there more. If you're low resiliency, don't go on Tinder. Don't mm. go on OkCupid. Mm. That's death for you because mm. these are random strangers who can break your heart and hurt you any number of ways. Mm. And you're low resiliency. You're not designed for that. You mm. need like good friends who vet other good friends who create mm -hmm. a familiar, loving, mm -hmm. stable environment of like small world, mm -hmm. you know, and strangers don't get access to you. Mm -hmm. And when I read Steve Rhodes saying that, I was like, hell yeah, this makes so much sense to me. I looked through some of my charts. I did some lists. It, it, he, he really did break through something here. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. He doesn't care if you're a true self or not, self-living or design or not, transference mm -hmm. or not, nothing. He's just what makes you happy. Yeah. And are you are you realistic like us? Mm -hmm. Are you more on the pessimist side or more on the optimist side? Mm -hmm. And the pessimist are the low resilience, the low confidence. And so Teal Swan, double pessimist, double low resilience, mm -hmm. she's going to be a little bit of an authoritarian and preventing others to have differing opinions. Mm -hmm. And she's going to say, this is the truth, and this is the only truth, and if anybody goes against it, she has the comments deleted, she has them removed from the venue, whatever, you know. Because she really shouldn't be in a big stage like that. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> but if you think about it, this is what's the problem is because then, then the people in that position bring up a whole bunch of contrary opinions mm -hmm. and then the discourse of opinions is quashed by an authoritarian right, right. sort of inability uh, to allow for divergence and divergent opinions. Really a homogenizing effect, mm -hmm. you could say. But of course there's benefits to it all. There are all advantages and disadvantages. Well, I won't uh, go into it too much, but I will just say something interesting that Divin said is because the reflector has a resistant aura, it can make others deeply uncomfortable. And that's kind of an interesting idea. People, Some people say it's because they're showing you you. That's not true at all. They're not showing me me, okay? Ra <laughs> would talk about how he's like, he's not antisocial, he's just anti-fucked up auras, okay? Yeah, right. And everyone has <laughs> fucked up auras. Reflectors aren't special. Yeah. Quadrites aren't special. Whatever little group you think you're in that makes you not have a fucked up aura, you're not. You know, the world has fucked up auras. You gotta go through seven years. How many of you have been through seven years? I haven't. I still have a fucked up aura at times, you know? Mike's seen me and been like, Jonah, what are you doing? Like, raging at the world or something, you know? I mean, this, just, this takes time. It all takes time, so... That's my little mini rant there. That's nice. <laughs> okay, this is a good one just to do a little brief commentary on uh, just a little funny thing where I think people have been talking about it, and I'm going to just be a little bit of a heretic here, and I'm going to say I think that, you know, I'm not going to speak for on behalf of anyone, but I think there was a little James Alexander Brayton, uh, Brayton beef, maybe, which was such a funny thing because these are both, to me, very... It just goes to show that when you find yourself in the little mutative cores, it's mm -hmm. like, how many lives have they had together? Yeah, you know what I mean? Real, like, were yeah. they married in a life? Yeah. Like, I, like that, that's what I always joke. Cause I, was, I, was that your wife in a past life? Yeah. Like, what's, you know, that's what am I, yeah. because, I mean, and, and I don't even want to say beef because I think what it really is, is just, um, and I've noticed it too. I really, I want to see it through the Steve Rhodes lens now. I don't know their charts enough, but now I'm so curious mm. to see it through the Steve Rhodes lens mm. because something that I've found 
is that, uh, so Brayton, I know one thing about his chart, I know that he's realist optimist. Mm. So I know that because I know that he's, um, wait, no, he's maybe not, he's, oh yeah, he's, he's in Well, on a tonal oh. level, he's quad right, so he has, on tonal, he has to be feeling and respect, right? Yeah. But at the color level, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I might have misspoken. The only thing that I remember is that I, at the conference last year, he was wearing noise canceling headphones. Oh, yeah. So I know that he is a low sound, which is fifth color, which is high resilience. I don't know if he's also high resilience on the personality side. That would actually make more neat. sense. Okay, well then that's but, that's medium no, no, resilience. That's a random. Memory. Like, oh no, he is. he is, he is. No, he absolutely cool. is. Wow, crazy. thank you. And we actually, I can't believe this. I had we had this conversation. See, this is the thing. Left variable? I don't know why I know yeah. that. That's no, so I love that. I love that. Okay, so he's need like Alloc, and um, so he he is realist optimist. Mm. Now, um, James is guilt, right? Isn't James uh-huh. also? He's okay. guilt and he's sound. So he's double optimist. Mm. So you know what's funny is, <laughs> when you <laughs> see these very yeah. optimist people, like Von Paul is double optimist. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't think they actually really have any problem with each other at all. I don't think they have any problem at all. I think it's like when, when James Joyce met... Um, met Proust, you know, and they just like didn't have, they were, and, and, and I think, and I see it too, because I see like, okay, like, especially someone like James Alexander has been doing human design for so long and he's gone to such a deep level of it. He's like mastered magic square, which he's like the only person in the world who's mastered magic square, except for uh, a guy in Seattle, um, who's also gotten that deep, but you know, there's, there's a few people out there, but anyway, um, I I won't out him in case he's low resilience. I think low resilience people don't like to be, uh, but anyway. Come to the conference. Okay. Uh, do a magic square presentation. Um, you know what was funny is uh, the guy I was speaking about in, C- in Seattle, I knew he was really into magic square. And then like three months after we had chatted about it or a couple months after, maybe, maybe it wasn't that long. I don't know. But on Reddit, I see this amazing magic square. Like it's like if you go on Reddit, oh, human yeah. design, have That's you seen that one? Post, yeah. So this guy I'm talking about. Oh, this guy I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah. He wrote, I didn't know he wrote that. I sent it to him and was like, okay. check out this awesome magic square post. And, and he's, he's like, like, That's me. That's me. That's me. <laughs> cool. I was That's like, great. I was like, you finally met your match. He's That's like, a it's, legendary it's me. Post. Yeah. So oh good. good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, yeah, so uh, but in any case, Okay, so but, but I, I think part of it, so for James to have gone so deep in Magic Square and stuff like that, and then and then Brayton is was newer, and I think, oh, I know exactly what it was. It was the, right, I'm right variable and right variable deconditions faster, or something like that. I don't know if Brayton ever said problem. that. Well, I don't know if Brayton ever said that. Brayton but, definitely said that. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> yeah. okay, well, this is news He's, to me. Yeah. I don't, I mean, <laughs> the right variable and deconditions faster. Well, I, you know, everyone can have their opinions on this, and it's fun to, you know, we're all doing these metaphysical research programs, uh-huh. so... We are, what we do is we observe and we notice and we see it. You know, someone like Trevor, who's also quad right, would be like, "Of course, you yeah, know, you know." And indeed, he did. He he, like, he actually did within he, like a week. He yeah. like he just like everything just immediately <laughs> yeah. changed on a dime. Got signed the Warner Brothers. That's, yeah. yeah, that's actually true. Trevor, Trevor got a. Uh, I have no I have no oh beef with God. that theory. That theory. No, I mean I stuff. guess, but but I guess. <laughs> In, in one sense, yes, but in another sense, no. Like, at one level, like, their trajectory is just different. Their they path take it, is they different. take it in immediately, but can they retrieve it regularly, right? Because right, yeah. right, 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 there's no then retrieval might, mechanism. So the, right. the retrieval is inconsistent, you would expect. That is exactly it. I'm just that is, No, no, no. The, I will exactly point out it. that this subject is not on our docket here. <laughs> Well, we have J.A. and Brayton Beef. Oh, never mind. Okay. That's cool. kind of the most Oh, gentle. I didn't realize. I didn't even put it as a subtitle. I, oh, you've been doing subtitles? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, well, just like it. titles. Oh, that's so cute. That's so, I can't wait to see them. I cannot wait. Um, well, I was just trying to see if I could find it. Yeah, so. It, it felt too hot to handle. It's like, ooh. But anyway, um, unless your name is James or uh, Vidal, you probably don't even know. <laughs> Sorry, I did out him a little bit. Uh, you probably don't even know Magic Square at all, really. And I don't hardly at all. I mean, how often do we use Magic Square? I was looking for the for one of the, the posts because it was just incredible. To, I mean, we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. But um, I was just going to say, like, so here's, my, here's my, my point. Okay, just to take a step back. You can go so deep into Magic Square. And so, yeah, um, you can just spend a year on Magic Square, you can go so deep, or you can go so deep like Steve Rhodes did, he went just so deep on the binaries. That's mm-hmm. all he went deep on. Right, That's yeah. the only thing. And he did the binaries of tones, he did the binaries of colors, and he did the binaries of lines. Yes. And he does the one, two, the three, four, the five, six. And by the way, I've been getting comments on the YouTube of someone saying like, don't, 
I wonder if it's Steve and his alter ego. I looked at their posts, I couldn't find anything. Mm. But he was like, don't mix up Bantu with human design. Like, they're very different things. Like, you don't even mix them. And I'm like, look, Steve, you spent like 15 years <laughs> well, studying the binaries. Yeah. It's the exact same system. It's the exact same formula. Mm. The moment that the Bantu chart diverges from the human design chart, mm. I will start talking about them as separate systems. Mm. But right now, I say they're Bantu. So I mean, yeah. well, Bantu is its own system. I totally admit that. I'm not going to get into semiotics about yeah, it. It's not a system. It is. Yeah. It's its own system. But it's following the exact same formula. It's simply grouping things into binaries, which is such a... Uh, right. When we've been talking about it, we've been using human design language <laughs> to talk about Bantu, like rather than using circle, hexagon... Yeah, I don't use that whatever. because it gets really difficult and people can't easily cross-reference. And I already found one mistake in uh, Steve Rhodes' book, which I'm sure he doesn't care about because he's high resilience. Mm -hmm. he's just, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I already found a mistake, which, you know, because I had to convert what he said back into human design. And, and, uh, but anyway, I don't want to dwell on that. So I guess I think the whole idea of the right variable deconditioning faster is it may be that they immediately start taking action faster. But I do not believe that they decondition faster because the seven years, it's too much of a coincidence that seven years divided by 64 hexagrams is exactly 39.998 days. Mm. It's too much of a coincidence, guys. Like, I'm not going to ever mm. believe that the seven-year deconditioning isn't real mm. because I've seen it. Mm. And I've also seen that the 39.999, that's 40 days. That is ex as close to 40 days as we can get. You, you basically divide the seven years, you get 40 days chunks. And all very logical. <laughs> Not an interesting pattern you've noticed. Very okay, good okay. left variable maths. <laughs> you're important. Okay, 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 okay. Well, they're well, anyway. like little, you know, uh, milestones. Yeah. You know, every 40 days, it's like you're entering into that new thing. And, and, well, and Richard Rudd um, he made this great book, theory where he talks about seven years in the Wheel of Passage, where it's all mm -hmm. about, like, you spend, you know, when it gets to gate. Uh, five, you're learning all about magnetism, and, or 15, and the aura, or whatever, you know, the 515, yeah, or when yeah. you get to the different, yeah, I guess it would be um, five, but, um, okay, so the here's a question I get a lot, best and worst relationships in human design, are we a good match? Oh boy. <laughs> so, are we a good match? Well, so I was trying to describe this last night, do you want to take a whack at it first? Um, no, I don't, what's okay. the question? Are we a good match? Me and my partner. Here's my chart. Here's my partner's chart. Oh, like what do you... How Are do you we a good that? or a bad match? Not, there's no such thing. I don't... Okay, I, maybe there's no such thing, but I do think that there's an interesting conversation. Okay, I'd like to hear what you have to say about this, because okay. here's another... Uh, you're going to be hearing a lot about C-Rose lately, so he had another thing <laughs> where he he does this up to five stars is the best oh, relationship nice. compatibility. Okay. <laughs> and he, said, he goes out of his way, though, and I, I totally love this. I love this so much, that the way he describes it. Because to me, it's the exact same way I've described it before. Mm. And I'm just like, this guy gets it. He totally gets it. Mm. And it's probably a right angle, I'm sorry, a left angle thing. Mm. And I wonder if it's more of a left angle thing. I'd be interested to hear from the right angles. And I don't mean this in a left angle snobbery, okay? Mm. We're the administrative department, okay? Mm. The right, the left angle is not fun. Everyone thinks the teacher's lounge and the admin are having a good time, you know? It's a little stressful. Yeah, fifth line, sixth line, like, don't be jealous of us, okay? We're, we're, we're the left angle. It's not like a one-upmanship. It's not like, like Vaughn being like, can I be a 10? Why am I a two? I'm like, you're too far. It's fine. He's like, can I be? Yeah, you get to be a five, I mean. So, but anyway, um, one of the things that Steve Rhodes says, and I just absolutely love it, is that love has nothing to do with compatibility. That uh, okay, love is yeah, yeah. magnetic monopole oh, G-center, yeah. and it is fractal line. Yeah. I that agree. love is when you can communicate with the other person. To, I mean, he's, this is now me talking, but because they're on your fractal line, they're so close to your fractal yeah. line, they're your fractal neighbor. You know, your fractal line, the way Ross said it is that you only have one neighbor on each side. Mm. And you, it's, so they're either one person away or two or three mm. or four mm. or 15 yeah. or up to hundreds of thousands. Right. He said these fractal lines go hundreds of thousands. Yeah. I mean, there's only five original lines, right? And mm. so you, it's whatever base you're on is that incarnative sequence you're on. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, or I guess four. There's only four, really. And so at eight, there's probably at this point, depending where you are in the fractal line, it may be possible for someone to be over a billion people away from you. Yeah. See what oh, I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whereas totally. it, they used to only ever be able to be millions away. I see. Or tens of hundreds or hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. so, cool. so, but anyway, this is, this is love. Love is at the fractal line level. That is the people that you are close to mm -hmm. fractally. 
-hmm. in your fractal. They are part of your fractal. They are the transpersonal forces that you meet. Because we're transpersonal, we can kind of see this very clearly. And so mm -hmm. is Steve Rhodes. He's a sixth line personality. And I think he's a six too, right? So, and he's uh, and so he's saying then that what's the compatibility then? Because love is always going to be a matter of for defined G center who we go out there and radiate love to, to or the undefined G who they and their discernment and wisdom allow to kind of love them. Mm -hmm. Or you know what I mean, who's that love do they want to amplify? Uh, so because the undefined G is getting all these different defined G's saying, I love you, I love you, come mm -hmm. with me and go my way and they have to kind of be discerning and choose. Mm -hmm. But that's a G center question, which is mm -hmm. to say it's a matter of spirit. It's a matter of the magnetic monopole, and it's a matter of who makes you feel alive, who emboldens your spirit, mm -hmm. and so on. And for the defined G, they have an undefined G out there who makes them feel more alive, and mm -hmm. the undefined G has a defined G who makes them, and so on. Mm -hmm. And it all works. And so compatibility is completely different. And so what Steve Rhodes here says is genius. He says, this is how much time you can spend with that person. Oh, cool, yeah. You have a limited mm -hmm. amount of time. It's almost True. like if you. It's almost like an episode of Black Mirror. This is me, not him now, but, you know, I, just, I imagine like a Black Mirror episode mm -hmm. where... There's the, the relationship clock. Oh, yeah. Have you seen that one? Uh-uh. Okay, well, I'm not going to spoil it for people who haven't seen it, but it's the premise is you get paired up randomly by an AI supercomputer mm -hmm. who has known how to match people perfectly, mm -hmm. but it gives you a clock mm. of how long. And it'll say, spend, spend 72 hours with this person. Mm. And then cool. the end of 72 hours, you have to leave. And you're reassigned. Yeah, yeah. And you're reassigned. And then yeah. they like, some people won't look and they want to be surprised. And mm -hmm. others will like look right away. And it's like eight years, four months, 22 days. Whoa. And they're like, it's like a prison sentence. Damn. And they're like, we shouldn't have looked on our first date. Jeez. Yeah. But like, you know, they're used to like looking and seeing like 22 hours. Yeah. And so they're like, yeah. whatever, you know. Cool. So, so it's a yeah. great premise, right? I love yeah. the premise. And it's a great, I didn't spoil too much. Like you can yeah. watch it and be, be overjoyed cool. by all the stuff that happens. But but that's kind of what mm -hmm. we, we get with the compatibility. Yeah, that uh, makes sense, yeah. How long can you spend with somebody? Yeah. What, before, is, what is the nature of our work together? Like, how long is that going to take? How long like, can you be in that person's yeah. presence mm -hmm. doing things that you were put on earth to do yeah. or that you were here to do? Mm -hmm. and, and But the funny thing is, he does kind of say, <laughs> it's so funny, he does kind of say it's um, before the program is just going to, like, pull you back like he almost like he sees the program at work and his book starts on the back it's like there is an invisible program controlling yeah. every aspect of your life the we, are code, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are robots we are robots exclamation point i mean it's a, it's amazing how but he's almost but he's kind of cool with it he's like innocence he's yeah. just like the program will pull you away from them uh -huh. and if you try to stay and spend more time with that person than your star rating allows, uh, basically. Mm -hmm. So he talked about, he did a bunch of couples in his book, and he looks at like famous royal couples and like um, Charles and Diana or something like zero star rating. Right. And then like, but then like some really famous one that are really like the more modern one where she came from a totally different background and all right. that stuff. They're five star rating. So it's like, well, obviously, like it outweighed every other, you know, concern. So you have your love, your incarnative family that you keep. Um, meeting again. With, yeah. yeah, so it makes sense that you can't give everyone the same amount of screen screen time every incarnation, right? Yes. Like some some movies you get like only get there's this person you really love, but you only get to hang out with them for a little bit because they only factor into that story that to that degree. And there are zero compatibility, so you're great for like two days and yeah, everything right. falls apart, mm -hmm. and you can't communicate or whatever. Or the other happens too, where you have really high compatibility with somebody and then. Maybe, you know, but you don't love them. They're not part of that fractal family and you just can't communicate. Mm. Uh, because there's going to be so many people out there that you're high compatibility with mm. that are not part of that fractal line either. So it really is a, a multi <laughs> This has nothing to do with you. I know, we're still going to do it. We're still going to do it. <laughs> okay. I also, get... What is I, it? I'm, time is dwindling for me. Okay. Well, some degrees. Okay, Good. well then we can. Can we do up. a part two? Because yeah, we talked we'll about do a part two. Anyway, okay, too. we'll just do a part two. Anything um, that you want to make sure we got uh, to today? Yeah, the one thing we're gonna make sure is just because see, Mike has a defined head in Ajna, uh -huh. so he's fine pointing to this piece of paper and saying, <laughs> "This one right here." Are we gonna talk about that? The viewers are not fine not knowing. <laughs> no, I was saying that one like, was not related. <laughs> yeah, well, that was that the K-pop. Like at this point, super not super group because that would mean like more people, but they're like a the boy, biggest boy band. Group. They're just a yeah. huge like mega sensation. BTS are apparently really into Carl Jung, right? Yeah. And apparently they've been into Carl Jung for a while, right? Yeah. Like, 
<laughs> they've just been like basing that they've been like secretly basing their k-pop like amp like uh-huh. music like, like inspired yeah. by it's like like like, well, like what are the translations are, are they like just like my anima uh, i don't know i haven't like, looked into it yeah my no, they shadow have got, like, deep in my yeah yeah i think they do do that yeah the no, Kanyuktio with you tonight is yeah. gonna something. <laughs> I was just telling that to you guys as a piece of trivia. That has nothing to do with. That. I know, but I wrote it. I wrote it down, <laughs> okay. and you know, people, the people want to know what's going on in the world. So it's to the point that the whole reason I noticed this is because I listen to Union podcasts, and there's been like this one podcast where it's like all of the recent episodes have been about <laughs> BTS for some reason. C always says I should listen to this Union Life. Is that one that you listen to? Oh, I have heard a few of those. Those are really good. Yeah. They, so. Should we fit in good. one more question? Uh, no, I don't. Well, now we have to. See, this is the other rule of broadcasting. If you point and say, are we going to talk okay, about this? Okay. We have to talk about it. Well, it's, I mean, it's gonna be well, what's good for saving for the next one? Uh, we what have plenty. We have plenty. All these are good. I don't really This want. is This is news. No, no, I know. No. It's a question. It's going to be a question. No, no, no. So, that one's not a question. This is something that happens. I know, but I wanted, she said there's going to be a question. Uh, we have to do it. Yeah, I mean, sorry, anytime sorry. you say something okay, there okay. is, you have to do it. Okay. Cool. And now that you said this one, something we have, and we have to talk about it. Okay. So, first of all, the are we a good match just want to wrap that up and just say love is different than compatibility Mm -hmm. human design can tell you all about compatibility be respectful to each other ask your generators yes no questions inform your manifestors play your projectors give your reflectors plenty of time um okay the one the news which we can maybe is kind of fun mike sent me this link on youtube with like 100 views which he always does he's base one movement so he finds the thing that like, like 98 people have found it uh-huh. was it on reddit or how did you it was, uh, it was on my youtube bit my youtube okay it's youtube great. recommended yeah. <laughs> yeah, YouTube he got it i didn't yeah. for some reason it didn't recommend to me <laughs> but it's chet and parkin's youtube page and a copy of his book was found in the rubble in ukraine and there's some interesting commentary it's found by a russian soldier and he's like and the per- the reporter that he's with is like, are you going to take that book? And he's like, yeah, it's got so many bookmarks. Like, I want to see what it has the all enemy these, was reading. Yeah, yeah it has yeah. all these bookmarks. Like, they're going to take it for intelligence purposes, yeah. possibly. Yeah. And then Chatton said something uh, really grim. He said, uh, it was owned by a female sniper who was later executed or something. Oh, really? But I think this is a second line fact because I have no idea how he could ever, <laughs> ever in a million years know this. In any way, she, I mean, okay, it did look like it may have been owned by a woman only because of the color of the bookmarks. Wow, I don't know if she was a sniper. Maybe there was a follow-up yeah, story. There was a lot I mean, of bookmarks. Sorry, I feel really bad for laughing about it. Because we shouldn't. I mean, anyone being, I mean, I'm more laughing that he just followed up on his own YouTube to be like, follow-up story, like, you know, um, the, the he heretics. Found out more or, information. The yeah, he put, probably, it, he put yeah. it in the comments. But, I was uh, just laughing at the term. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know, I know. We're not making, we're not <laughs> making light of the, I mean, it's a terrible conflict, and um, our hearts are with the people. It is a it. really surreal video, and there is something that's like, feels like the program breaking down when you watch it, because it does, it's not that it seems staged in like a conspiratorial way, but it just seems like such a um, oblique oh, it's, use of the program to connect these things. I don't it's know. such a weird thing, and it's just, well, to me, it was like my fractal family, like the one person in the military that actually was into human design got captured by the enemy made me sad i was like now it's not it's no longer 20 million it's 19 million nine hundred you know you know we've we've lost one you know and so um or i I hope that's not true i I hope that whoever owned that book is alive and well yeah i don't know but um because i've heard enough second line facts that i i I do my first line research. Right. <laughs> but, you know, first lines put out, you know, I mean, not, not that first line facts are that much better, honestly. They just, they just, they just have a lot of reasons. So They more resemble facts. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for watching. Yeah, they more resemble what we expect to be a fact. Yeah. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, we have a lot more interesting and just interesting miscellany in the world of human design. So we'll be doing another state of human design soon. But we really appreciate you all for watching, and please post any questions and comments. Those of you coming to the Human Design Conference, we're five weeks out. Oh, wow. Five coming weeks. Up. So really excited. Can't wait to see you all there. And um, have a great day, wherever it is and whatever it is you're doing.